Hello, ladies and gentlemen. Today we are going to be talking about minimum wage and tipping. So I already, in another video, did talk about the, like, you know, $2.13 an hour kind of thing and how the tips that you make during your shift as a server throughout the entirety of your payroll or through tax season or depending on, like, you know, when you're when your when your payroll and all that stuff goes through, um, you know it's supposed to equate to at least minimum wage or more when you are serving. In spite of you only getting paid two thirteen an hour, you're going to find yourself in a situation where you know your tips are supposed to compensate because you're supposed to be paid at least minimum wage per hour um, on an average basis when it comes to your tips. Again, it varies slightly depending on the state that you work in and you know what your payroll looks like. There are certain places where I have been paid daily on certain like applications so it's dependent on if you're paid daily because then it's kind of harder to gauge during like tax season or something you have to like wait until tax season actually hits or you know you're paid on your payroll and then the hours versus the pay you got to calculate for that most of the time servers will make over minimum wage from what i've seen other than like really divey places i guess i don't know but also you know we're in texas where minimum wage is literally like seven dollars an hour so it really doesn't matter that much it's a difference of four dollars and if you have like a few tables that would probably do it i don't know in general it just depends but the point i'm trying to make is because i found a an interesting like composition of reddit postage that i figured i would kind of run through hold up hold up pardon my clicky clacking of the mouse but we're just going to go through this reddit post when servers get minimum wage you should not tip at all R slash end tipping is where we're going to be going through today. And when servers get minimum wage, you should not tip at all. In another thread, in this sub, no less, I had someone say that regardless of the fact that in Washington state servers get the full fifteen seventy five per hour, because there are high cost of living areas here, that we are still obligated to tip. If you are following that logic, then why are we also not obligated to tip every minimum wage worker? Enough is enough. There's a slight argument to be made that when servers are not even getting minimum wage that you shouldn't penalize them, but in this case, not a flipping chance. If the minimum wage isn't enough for them to survive, then they need to take advantage of the options available to them like unionizing, or finding a higher paying job. It is not our obligation as consumers to fight the battles for minimum wage workers if they are not going to fight for themselves. In these states, servers are required to be paid full minimum wage. Alaska, California, Hawaii, Montana, Minnesota, Nevada, Oregon, Washington. Stop tipping entirely in these states. And it's very interesting actually because I can actually like level with the breakdown of that the point of tipping is actually to drive it up to minimum wage um, when it comes to serving in various places. Now, if these places already get minimum wage, then it's a questionable you know, situation. But I'm not actually entirely certain. It depends, I think, on the establishment. I would much prefer to tip at a higher based establishment, like one that does bottle service, you know, wine service, one where I get like, you know, more higher end experiences. I would still, if I even went to these, you know, states, and had my server doing minimum wage work, I would still be inclined to tip them no matter what the cost of living is going to be because it's their performance of service for me, the individual, as a guest at an establishment. I can completely level with the prospect though of actually like not tipping no matter what. I don't care if it's minimum wage or not at, you know, a Wendy's, a McDonald's, a Starbucks, all this stuff because you know, restaurants, again, versus fast food establishments, it's a completely different game, and most fast food establishments still give their servers minimum wage. They're not even considered, I think, I don't think they're considered servers entirely. They could be. I don't know what the actual, like, categorization of individuals working in the fast food industry is. I remember when I was working in fast food, it was just, you're a, like, fast food worker, a cashier, stuff like that, you're paid minimum wage. And the tips are just a, like, a bonus that you have to split amongst a bunch of individuals. But if you have a singular server working in a restaurant, you know, minimum wage or not, whether they're getting paid two thirteen an hour or $20 an hour or $50 an hour, whatever the minimum wage is of the place, I still feel that it would be justifiable to be able to tip at these establishments based on the establishment itself and the service that's performed. So I don't know, man. It's questionable. I'd like to look more into the like differences of like cost of living versus the tips and also versus the like actual wages of the individuals working in these higher cost living areas. California is absolutely wild. You know, New York 
insane, places like that, it's such a high cost of living that I feel like you can't really survive off of minimum wage there, but also you can't really survive off of minimum wage anywhere unless you're literally working your life away. And even then, it's a question at best. Like in Dallas, you know, say like the only reason I can live in Dallas is because I have a roommate. But hypothetically, if I were to try and live on my own in Dallas, it would be like the cheapest place I can probably find. Maybe like 1200 to 1600 to 18 I don't even know, man. Like, this is the problem. It's like, it, the market is so insane right now that I don't think you can actually live on your own on a minimum wage job at all. Like, you'd really have to be in a shoebox, or you'd really have to be nickel and diming and basically just paying rent. There are certain states where, yeah, people are paid, like, quite a lot as a server, but then there are also people who are paid the 213 an hour isms, and then they make like $50 an hour anyways from tips. So again, like the subjectivity of like, if the restaurant's paying the wage, or if the person being served is paying the wage, either way, if a wage is made, then it's, you know, it is what it is. But I am curious actually to see like what the difference in total income would be between these two forms of service and what the income is going to be of like fast food workers versus restaurant workers. It's kind of difficult to find any statistics on this that are accurate because one, there's a disproportionate level of like income reporting when it comes to this. Also because, you know, cash tips are one of those things that are not commonly conversed about in the restaurant industry. And a lot of servers don't get cash tips anymore because of the, you know, everything becoming a card. You know, when you pay somebody out, they just write it on the thing, a little checkout or all that. They put the tip on the thing, they sign it, you know, it verifies a tip. It also allows people to pay tip out as servers to back of house staff, front of house staff, etc. So again, like, I'm very curious as to like what this conversion actually would be. Going through the comments, a lot of people are in total agreement. Um... But other people are saying things like, I'm okay with tipping a bit, but like, what is the need for it to be so much? If a server takes 15 minutes to serve a party that orders $50 of stuff, that's $200 of sales for an hour of work. Even 5% gets that to $10 extra for that hour of work on top of the wage they're getting. Hypothetically, if you do make actually like a net of like $20 an hour or whatever, and then you get a bonus of like $10 an hour, you're making $30 an hour, is that enough to live in your area? We don't actually know. And then this guy's saying there's no rationale, you know, this is like the main poster, there's no rationale for 20% minimum even outside of places like California. In San Francisco, they are making $18.07 per hour. We should at least be tipping less than before. So again, it's variable based on the location, but I think the anti-tipping thing should be applied more in like casual spaces, like again, like McDonald's and stuff like this, Starbucks, places where people are actually certified their wages. Although again, the question is, does minimum wage cut it? And also what are the tips that these establishments are actually racking versus things like at a restaurant where the tips are literally the wage. And that's why a lot of places, the higher end you go, the more money you make. And it's like working like as a, I don't know, it's like business classes or something or whatever. It's like any other kind of like, you know, networking job or whatever crap or, you know, you know anything where the more you work it or the longer you have experience in some sort of field, the more money you have the potential to make depending on the circumstances you find yourself in. So again, um, you know, I'm not sure. Like I'm, I'm again, I'm not anti-tip. I usually tip pretty heartily and, uh, you know, usually I'm very like careful about the places I do pick to tip. Uh, and to actually visit, because if I go to a Starbucks, I'm not tipping 20% on drinks. If I go to a McDonald's, I'm not going to want to tip on a burger they throw in basically a micro nuker. You know, and these people, again, they're paid a base wage when other instances kind of perpetuate you to not be paid a base wage. So, uh, I don't know. A lot of people are just like, full stop, forget it, don't want to tip, not going to do it, blah, 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 blah. It is interesting. And the real question is, should establishments be forced to pay at least minimum wage amongst all servers, no matter the state? Personally, I don't really care because either way, as long as I make my money, it doesn't matter to me. Um, again, I've worked at places that do tip pooling. I've worked at places that have slightly higher minimum wages. I've worked at places that do the 213 an hour and you get tips. And either way, as long as you make enough money to survive and you perpetuate your well-being, does it really matter? On an ethical basis, I think it would, because again, you as the guest of an establishment, do you want to feel responsible for somebody getting paid or not getting paid when the establishment's making a lot of money and has the ability to pay the server more? 
This also is a slight issue when it comes to staffing. You see, there are other positions in restaurants that are, one, harder to fill, and two, cost more money to fill the positions of. When you're a server, you, amongst a host of other servers, can be hired in mass for two thirteen an hour, which is why it's kind of more unethical, because then all of a sudden, they overstaff a bunch of servers, and in general, the servers make way less money because there's more of them on a common shift. So maybe they're only operating two to three table sections. Maybe they don't really work at a really high-end place. Maybe things like that. You know, you know what I mean. It's way easier to operate with a ton of servers in an establishment for the establishment. They can just hire as many as they want. It costs us like nothing. You know, it costs a restaurant like nothing, like $100 a day or, you know, uh, one, to, you know, so something like $50 to $150 a day to employ a host of servers versus, you know, chefs or, you know, kitchen staff. Say they get paid minimum wage to $20 an hour on an average basis. It's going to cost way more for them or for people who are paid $8 an hour as like bussers or something that get way less tip out. Again, like it's going to be harder for them to get put in the position uh, as, you know, massively because, again, the establishment doesn't want to pay for that many people with that base of a wage. They'd rather have just a bunch more servers and then throw more work at them, which is incredibly inconvenient and a massive problem. So again, there's no real solution to this. It's based on the industry. You'd basically, I think, have to at this point topple the entire industry and apply like federal laws, which is unlikely and or improbable at, at best. Maybe impossible, but I'm not sure. Comment below to tell me what you think about this because it's incredibly interesting to me. But uh, yeah, that was the video. Thank you so much for watching, my friends. It has absolutely been lovely, and I will see you next time. Slater.